If someone mentions Kolkata, the first place that comes to the mind is Howrah Bridge. The bridge on the Hooghly River is a famous symbol of Kolkata and the pride of its inhabitants, which connecting Kolkata with its neighbor city of Howrah. It carries a daily traffic of approximately 1 lakh of vehicles and more than 1.5 lakhs of pedestrians, making it one of the busiest bridges in the world. The history of this bridge dates back to almost 150 years ago. Since 1853, after the establishment of Howrah Railway Station, the necessity was filled for a bridge connecting the cities on either sides of the Hooghly River. As Kolkata grew in size, and the only connectivity was ferry boat at that time. In the year of 1862, the government of Bengal asked George Turnbull, chief engineer of the East Indian Railway Company, to study the feasibility of constructing a bridge in Hooghly River. He reported that constructing a bridge on this location requires considerably more money and effort because in this particular location, soft mud exists up to great depth under the riverbed. A good place for a bridge was at Palta Ghat, about 25 kilometers to the upstream side from here, where stiff clay existed at shallow depths under the riverbed. Ultimately, nothing came out of this study, but the seeds had been sown for constructing a bridge. In 1870, Calcutta Port Trust was founded, and a contract was signed with English civil engineer Sir Bradford Leslie to construct a pontoon bridge over the Hooghly River. Pontoon Bridge is a floating bridge structure made by using floats or small boats, which anchored by chain for the stability and supports the deck slab. As there is no steel manufacturing company in India at that time, so the parts of this bridge were made in England, then shipped to Kolkata to be assembled by Calcutta Port Trust. The first bridge over Hooghly River connecting Howrah to Kolkata was completed in 1874 at a total cost of only Rs 22 lakhs and opened to traffic on 17th October in that year. It was 465.7 meters long and 19 meters wide. A few years later, the bridge was illuminated by using electric lamp posts powered by dynamo at Malik Ghat pumping station. However, the problem was, this type of bridge could not bear the load of heavy traffic and rough weather. As the bridge could not handle the rapidly increasing load, the port commissioners started planning in 1905 for a new improved bridge, and a committee was set up to look into this matter in 1906. Based on the report, the committee finally decided that constructing a new floating bridge would be the best option. Subsequently, tenders were extended for the design and construction. This initial plan of action could not be started as the World War I began in 1914. In 1921, a committee of engineers named Mukherjee Committee was formed under the chairmanship of Sir Rajendra Nath Mukherjee, who was the famous Bengali industrialist and founder of Martin & Co., today which is known as Martin Bond Limited. At that time, this company had a lot of credentials of constructing iconic structures like the famous Victoria Memorial in Kolkata. In 1926, Sir R. N. Mukherjee recommended a suspension bridge of a particular type to be built across the Hooghly River, and the new Howrah Bridge Act passed in this year, which ensured laws to acquire land, employ many, and levy taxes for maintenance. The location of the new bridge was formed the subject of considerable discussion. It was desirable for the approaches to connect with the junction of Harrison Road and Strand Road on the Calcutta side and with the entrance to Howrah Station and Grierson Road on the Howrah side. Finally, the committee of engineers suggested a site 250 feet upstream of the old bridge. Soon after, in 1930, a special kind of suspension bridge was designed by Randall, Palmer and Triton. Initially, the British company Cleveland Bridge and Engineering Company Limited secured the contract for the whole construction and erection work. But due to increasing political tensions between Germany and Great Britain in 1935, it was not given the contract. The Brainworth Burn and Joseph Construction Company Limited was awarded the construction contract in that year. Construction was started by 1936, but again World War II started in 1939.
All the steel that was supposed to come from England were diverted for the war effort in Europe. Out of 26,500 tons of steel that was required for the bridge, only 3,000 tons were supplied from England. Indian company Tata Steel Limited got the opportunity to supply the remaining 23,500 tons of high tension steel. Tata developed the high quality of steel required for the bridge called as T-Chrome, which was India's first high tension steel. In spite of the Japanese threat, the government of India continued the construction and the new Howrah Bridge was finally completed in 1942 at a total cost of Rs 2.5 crores. Because of the World War, there was no opening ceremony held and it was opened to the public on 3rd February 1943. The first vehicle to cross over the Howrah Bridge was a solitary tram. The bridge was officially classified as suspension type balanced cantilever. At the time of its construction, it was the third longest cantilever bridge in the world, after the Quebec Bridge in Canada and fourth bridge in Scotland. Currently, it is the sixth longest cantilever bridge in the world, with a total length of 705 meters. Let us talk about the structural analysis of Howrah Bridge. The main span of Howrah Bridge is formed by two cantilever arms extending from the main towers, but does not meet at the center. Instead, this supports a central truss bridge called a suspended span, which rests on the end of the cantilever arms by articulation joint. Articulation is the structural configuration of bridge bearings where you can see a lower nib, which is the part of cantilever arm, and an upper nib which is the part of suspended span. Bearing is provided between them to transfer the loads from suspended span to cantilever arms and to allow permitted movements. And a movement joint is there to resist non-permitted undesirable movements. This is the suspended span of Howrah Bridge. And here you can see the articulation joint of this bridge between the cantilever arm and suspended span. And this is the expansion joint between them. Now to balance the cantilever portion, another cantilever arms provided projecting in the opposite direction, which acts as counterbalance of each cantilever arms and forming a balanced cantilever. When they attach to a solid foundation, the counterbalancing arms are called as anchor arms. The structure distributes tension via anchor arms to the outermost supports while the compression is carried to the foundation beneath the central towers. As per the design, the maximum load that may come on the foundation from the superstructure is approximately 17,000 tons downward compression at each main pier location and 6,800 tons of upward tension at each outermost anchor supports. To resist these heavy loads, the main towers are based on single monoliths of dimensions 55 into 24 meters with 21 chambers by internal connecting crisscross RCC walls called as staining walls. This is the structural steel arrangement for external staining walls and this is for the internal staining walls. In the bottom of these RCC walls, this is called carp with cutting edges. The job of sinking the caissons was carried out round the clock at a rate of approximately 1 feet per day. The caissons were sunk through soft river deposits to a stiff yellow clay 26.5 meters below ground level at Howrah site and 31.4 meters below ground level at Kolkata site. After penetrating 2.1 meters into stiff clay, all chambers were individually dewatered, excavated, and plugged with concrete. Two main towers are connected with the monoliths by heavy duty bolts. The whole weight of the caisson to be carried by outside skin friction and the bearing at cutting edges under the wall. Skin friction on the outside of the monolith walls was estimated at 29 kN per meter square while loads on the cutting edge in clay overlaying the founding stratum reached 100 tons per meter. Now, if we roughly calculate the maximum load carrying capacity of the foundation, we get the maximum load carrying capacity equals to 
29 into total outer surface area of the monolith plus 100 into total cutting edge length in meters, where 29 each in kilonewton. Let's convert it in tons, means 29 divided by 9.81. The total cutting edge length is equals to 55 into 4 plus 24 into 8 and the outer surface area below ground level is equals to 55 into 2 plus 24 into 2 into 26.5 meters which is the depth of foundation below the ground level at Howrah site. After calculations we get this is equals to 53,577 tons. The design load of each foundation is 17,000 tons, means the factor of safety is equals to 53,577 divided by 17,000 tons equals to 3.15. However, for D foundation, factor of safety based on the end bearing and shaft skin friction resistance should be greater than 2.0 as per the recent design code provisions. Hence this gigantic bridge has designed by taking more safety margin to consider rapidly increasing traffic as predicted. To resist 6800 tons of upward tension at each outermost anchor supports, the dead weight of each anchorage should more than 1.5 times the maximum possible uplift forces equals to 10200 tons. The anchor links from the superstructure was located at two points at a distance of 23.2 meters apart underneath the main trusses and attached with the foundation by anchor gutter with adjustable packing. Now the foundations had necessarily to be taken deep to reach the clay to resist the uplift forces. But a single large monolith was neither necessary nor economical for anchor block because the load is comparatively less and in upward direction. Therefore, it was decided that each anchorage should consist of two separately sunk monoliths of each 8 meters into 16 meters with two chambers and both monoliths was tied together by means of a tie beam. The main towers are consist of two posts with a system of K bracing between them and a portal opening to accommodate the carriageway. The truss formation from main towers are K types on the both sides and for the suspended span is an N type. Adoption of a K type truss helped in the reduction of slenderness effect of the large vertical loads. The bridge deck hangs from panel points in the lower core of the main trusses with 39 pair of hangers. This is the lower cord of main truss and the hangers are hanging from it via panel points. Every pair of hangers are connected with a single cross gutter on the bottom of the slab by pinned connection and these cross gutters are arranged with six longitudinal stringer gutters. Floor beams are supported transversely on the top of the stringers while themselves supporting the RCC deck slab and the footpath projected on both sides of the trusses supported by fascia gutter. Here you can see the hangers are hanging from lower cord of main truss and every pair of hangers connected with single cross gutter which are arranged with six longitudinal gutters. The floor beams are supported on it and the deck slab is supported on floor beams. This is the fascia gutter supporting the footpath. All the structural segments are connected by riveted joint. A rivet is a small cylindrical pin made of tensile metals in which the cylindrical part of the rivet is called the sank or body. The bottom part below the sanks is called the tail. The semi-hemispherical part at the top is called the head. After heating, rivet is inserted into the holes of plates which are to be joined. Then its tail is upset by a hammer. This is how this iconic structure is standing strong against increasing traffic and natural disasters since many decades. If you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and click on the bell to turn on the notification.